Duba de Simeo Ao e Fafiroa in his sumo ya Savea Dama e Ronnie Clark. Like Titsi Pupu, Ilingana Piratania, a while Tato Uso, George Lineta. So I think it'd be more fitting if I speak in English. So, George, just for you, <laughs> and, for, and more for me too, I'm going to speak in English. Um, but this morning, I thank you so much for this opportunity. My father schooled, was a scholarship student to New Zealand many years ago, and Pastor Tavale was at school at Samuel College together with my father. And he came to New Zealand, and he had a, a, a dream. He was schooling at Wanganui Boys College. And while he was there, he befriended another scholarship student from Fiji. They became such good friends that they decided they made a deal, a pact. They formed a pact between the two of them. And they said to each other, their firstborn sons, they will name each other that name. So I was named Eroni, Wangathiku, or Eroni. Um, which is Fijian, which is quite amazing because whenever I went to Fiji and I was playing in the sevens for New Zealand in 93, we came to Fiji with the New Zealand team and there were two other Fijian All Blacks that were in our New Zealand sevens team. And as we stood there, the two, the two Fijians um, were getting all of the paparazzi, was taking photos of them and as they were excited to see their two Fijian playing for New Zealand coming back to Fiji. And the paparazzi was around them and taking photos. And then Paul Ambale calls to me, hey, Ronnie, come over. So I walked over to the three where they were. And then next thing you know, the paparazzi are taking photos of all three of us. And then as the next day in the newspaper, it said, three all black Fijians return home. <laughs> and then it said in the paper, the paper went on to say, hey, Ronnie Clark, whose mother is from the island of Vanua Levu. And I thought, Wow. And then it went on to say, me quoted saying, I can't wait to play out there in the stadium today because I know my family are in the grandstand. And so I walk around in Suva all that whole week and people are coming up to me, hey, Ronnie, vanu alevu, vanu alevu. And I'm standing there thinking, oh, yeah, where this is going. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and so I cut out that, that news article and I brought it home just to show my mother from, uh, who's from the village of Vayala. So... <laughs> So my father from Salu Fata came to New Zealand as a scholarship student in the early 60s. But the thing about it for him was, though he found a friend that he could share with and talk with, and they made that pact, and my father honored that pact with his friend and named his Samoan son of the Fijian name Eroni. And so for me, um, so for dad at that time, really the reality of that moment was that a dream had started in his heart that when he starts a family, when he goes back to Samoa, meets a, a Samoan girl, gets married, they will come to New Zealand. And that was his dream, to keep moving forward, to keep moving forward in life. And so when he went back to Samoa, he met my mother and soon after they were married and they started a family. And so as soon as three of us, my sister and my other brother was, were, were born, we came to New Zealand and still my father for, for that very, very thing that his children and his family would have a better way of life, a better education. And so for us to keep moving forward as a family, I can remember as a seven-year-old watching the All Blacks play while I was living in Oweraka. And it was an amazing time because there was a buzz in the house. And my father was excited because he played for the Manu Samoa years ago. And here on that day in 75, the All Blacks were playing against Scotland and Eden Park was flooded. And as the men ran out onto the field, my dad said, son, watch that number 11. It's Brian Williams. And I was obviously very captivated and excited to see Brian Williams. I don't know rugby. I've never watched a game. But I watched this man, and he was amazing. As soon as he got the ball, he sidestepped, fended one player off, and he bowled over another Scottish man, and he went over and scored a try. And I was captivated. And I turned to my dad, and I said to my dad, Dad, how do you become an All Black? Yeah, my father, he paused. He looked over at me and he said, son, you have to be brainy. And I thought, all right, dad, if every single all black must be brainy, then that's what I want to be one day. A dream started in my heart in that moment. So my parents, again, keep moving forward, son. Keep moving forward. Education is going to be the way. But a dream started in my heart. I wanted to play for the all blacks. And not long after that, I remember following my cousin Fatmanu. I said, Fatmanu, where are you going? He said, I'm going to training. So I went with him. 
And as we came to this open field, all of these players, all these boys running around chasing the same ball that I saw Brian Williams chasing, I wanted to play. And I was really excited. And as I stood there and I watched, the coach looked over to me and he said, son, do you want to play? And I said, yes, yes, I would love to play. And so I walked onto the field and as soon as I got the ball, God started running, sidestep over here, fended another player, ran around another player, and I thought I was Brian Williams. And I remember Brian Williams diving over the line to score the try, and I dived over and I scored the try, and I got up and I started to celebrate, only to have one of the players tackle me. And then I looked, got up, and I said, Coach, here's the try line, I scored the try. And the coach looked at me and he said, Son, that's not the try line, that's the 22. <laughs> but I still had this desire to play for the All Blacks. And you know, from there, from the central Auckland and Owairaka, we moved out to West Auckland. And I can remember from there growing up, going on to schools, Henderson High. And the thing about it for me, though, was, and Pastor Tavale will, will know this many times, as, as a young, young one in Henderson, we used to have Henderson Square back in the day. They didn't have the malls back then. They had the square. And every Friday night, I would go and I would go there and I would see all my friends. But the thing about it, as a 16-year-old by that stage, we were going to church. But the truth of the matter was, I was only going to church to make my parents happy. I would sit at the back of the church. I would hear the minister talking. And I couldn't understand what he, was, what he, what he meant. So I couldn't understand. He talked about the love of God. He talked about the peace of God. But it didn't register to me. Not in my mind. Not even in my heart. But every Friday... I would go down to the square, and there were these group of people standing on a street corner, and they were singing about the same God and the same Jesus that I heard on every Sunday, and I didn't want to even go to church, but I'm so thankful for a mother who every Sunday without fail, pull the sheets off the bed, get you ready, get you in the show, get ready, and we'd be off to church, and yet I would see these people every Friday on that street corner singing about Jesus, singing about God, but there was something different about these people. And I couldn't put my finger on it, Pastor. I couldn't put my finger on it. And so one Friday night, I must have got too close to them because one of them stopped and asked me, excuse me, do you know the Lord? And I said, yes, I know God. I go to church. And he said, really? I said, yes, so you, know, you don't have to tell me about God. And the thing about it, though, is we stop more and more. He said to me, Aaron, you know, you've got the head knowledge of God, but you've never ever asked him to come into your life and be Lord and Savior of your life. And as he started to talk more and more about it, I realized that is so true. I'd never, ever asked. I'd never invited him to come into my life. And I know that very night he gave me a small track. And on my way home and at night, and as I sat in my room, in the quietness of my room, I read through the tract and asked Jesus to come and be Lord and Savior of my life. The truth and the reality of Christ became real for me in that moment and in my life, in my room. And so started my journey to walking with God. But you know, the reality too of that time was, I still wanted to be an All Black. I still wanted to play for Auckland at that time. We were, well, one of the greatest provincial teams in the world. And I can recall member finishing from there going on and years later, you know, my dream coming true, I got to play for the All Blacks. And what a proud moment to be beside other brothers like Michael Jones and others, to sing the national anthem of New Zealand, to do the haka, to play against the World 15. This boy born in, in Samoa, now living, playing for that team. I see a Crusader jersey over there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but I got to play for the All Blacks, and it was awesome. And the thing about it for me, and I just want to share this, a couple of things that I really believe. Because why? Because I believe God wants us to keep moving forward. That we go. That we hear the calling. And you know, I, from now, I've, I've been doing a lot of coaching since playing for the All Blacks. And I've had the privilege of being able to coach many young men and training and being able to help them be the best that they can be. Not only in just sport, but in life as well. And you know, when I coach, I coach usually the backs. And I have a thing when I'm coaching the backs to be the best attacking team that they can be. And so I use acronyms that I use, and I want to share some of these acronyms as a coach of my, uh, in my playing capacity. I, want to, I use liking the words, excuse me, 
I use the word Chad. When I'm coaching a back line to make it easier for the boys to understand what I'm saying to them, I use acronyms, and the word is Chad. So each letter in this word Chad, C-H-A-D, means something to them. And so when I'm coaching them, the first word C is communication. And it's important to communicate when you're playing in sport, when you're on the attack against the opposition, because you need to have a look and see where are the weaknesses, where are the opportunities in the opposition backline that we can attack. And so they need to communicate that to one another so they can see where the, where the opportunities are and they attack in that place. The next letter, H. H is for hold. Now as a backline, we know if we keep creeping, while the balls come into the lineup and they're moving the, the ball forward and we're all moving forward as a back line, but the ball breaks down into a ruck. But if the back line keeps moving forward, if we keep moving forward, what's going to happen if we don't hold? When the ball comes out, we're going to be catching the ball over here. And we know as a back line, if we're catching the ball over here, we're going to slow down and our back line attack is going to be ineffective. And we're not going to get the thing that we want to do. We're not going to get the objective as a back line. So we have to hold. A. A is for alignment. Whatever the move might be called that's going to attack the opposition, we have to make sure as a back line that we are in the right alignment. What's the move? The move is double miss. Whatever the move is, I need to be in the right alignment, close to the second five, wide of the second five, so that I'm in the right. So when the ball comes out and we can execute the move precisely. So A, alignment's important. And then D, D is for depth. Depth is really, really important in a back line. Because if you're not deep and you don't get the ball deep and on attack and you get it flat, again, it'll slow down the whole back line move. I'm trying to teach my son at the moment, he's playing in his last year at, uh, at, at Mount Albert Grandma in, first, in the first 15. He's moved into the centers. He's usually a, a winger. He's playing really, really well. And so he's moving into the centers and I'm trying to explain to him, son, if you're not deep in these particular moves, when you get the ball, when by the time you get to the opposition, you'll have no time to make good decisions. And so he understands keeping my depth is important in attack. And you know, this word, this word Chad, I look at it so often because it's not just effective on the rugby field, but it's also effective in our walks, in my walk with the Lord, about moving forward. See, how important is it to communicate? How is it important? What do we communicate to our children? What do we communicate to our wives? They say that when we communicate well and encourage our children, that's like rocket fuel for their soul. You know, the proverb says that a thoughtless word can cut deeper than the sharpest sword. But when we encourage our sons, when we empower them and affirm them, how they grow. And so for me, I understand even as a man, as a father, to keep moving forward, to see my children move forward, I need to communicate and affirm them. H, hold. How is it important for us to hold, to not get ahead of the Lord? So often we want to go, yes, God, that's where I want to go. I, I see it. I see it. And we want to move today, but God's saying, wait, wait, just hold. So how important. The Bible talks so often about in Ecclesiastes that God's timing, there is a time for everything, a time to die and a time to live. And so timing is everything. A, alignment. Aligning ourselves with the will of God. How important is it for us to keep moving forward that we align ourselves with the will of God? You know what? So often when God calls us to do something and then over time we, we get to a place where it starts to get hard and we start to cry out to God, God, what's happening? Are you with me? And we can't seem to hear the will of God, but God's saying, keep going. It happened to me years ago when I was dropped from the All Blacks and I didn't want to go any further in my walk, but in, in, in my rugby, I wanted to give up. But God says, you go, go and do what I've called you to do. And as I went and as I obeyed, I realized each morning as I shared that time with God that I realized something, that I was right in the middle of his will. And so the thing about it, how important it is to align yourself with the will of God and D, finally D, depth. For us to keep moving in life, move forward in life, that we are calling with, with God, how important it is for us to have depth in our lives. God wants to build depth in your life and my life. Romans 5 says that we glory in tribulation, for tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, and character, hope. 
God wants to build depth in our lives. So for you and I, as I just as I finish, you know, I want to encourage you this morning, as we hear at Tamatane, as we become more and more as God has called us, that he wants us in our lives to communicate, to encourage, H, to hold, to make sure that we're going in God's time, not our time. A, to align ourselves, align ourselves in his will. And as he calls us to go, don't question, God, are you still there? He's still there. Until he says, turn left, turn right, or stop, then that's fine. Keep going. And then depth. Depth. God wants to produce depth in our lives. Put steel in our back as men, that we are tamatan. And so for me this morning, I want to encourage you men. As we go on this morning, to be encouraged, communicate, hold, align yourself, and de have depth. Can I pray this morning, Pastor? Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. God, as we, just, as we begin our, our day this morning, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the speakers that have gone and previously last night, Lord, as we come this morning, God, Lord, we continue to commit ourselves. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to give us, Lord, that ability and that courage to speak when we need to, Lord. Also, Lord, to hold when we need to. Father, to have alignment with you, God, and God, that you're building depth in our lives to be men of character, men of perseverance, that, Lord, that we don't fall when the, when the storms of life come, but, Lord, that we look to you, our hope and our glory. So, Father, we give you thanks this morning. In your name, Jesus, we pray. And all of our men said, Amen.